you're thinking about upgrading your entertainment center to something super fancy like this, I'll show you the steps I took to make this happen. Steps you should consider taking. Let's get to it. First thing you should do is go online and search a bunch of entertainment center designs. Then save pictures of the entertainment centers you think will look good in your space. Also take note of some features you would like to incorporate in your design. Okay, now that you have somewhat of an idea what you want your space to look like, to actually design your space, you're going to need these things. First, the measurement of your walls, the space you're working with. Two, the measurements of the items you're going to incorporate in your design. That means note down the measurements of your TV, printer, speaker, modem, router, fireplace, etc. Now don't go buying a bunch of items because it might not fit in your design later. It's best to research the item specs online for the measurements. Then just make a note of it for now. Three, the location of your outlets and wall jacks like coaxial, ethernet cable hookups. Will they need to be relocated? How far are they from the space you're working on? Now that you have that information, you can go ahead and design your space. There are different ways you can do this. The first is the caveman style. Use a pen and paper. Draw it out. Second, contact a interior designer in person or online. The best bet is to use a freelance service like Fiverr or Upworks. There are a bunch online to choose from. Explain to them what you're trying to accomplish. If they can design the space and present it to you in the 3D rendering. If they're familiarized with an interior design software, they should be able to accomplish this at a reasonable price between 50 to 100 dollars they're not designing a house it's just a wall so the price for that service shouldn't be ridiculous the third is to do what i did i bought a software for like 30 bucks to design it myself the software i use is interior design by punch this video is old so the software is outdated right now but you can still find something out there that would accomplish the same thing it took me some time, but I figured out the software and I came up with this design right here. It's kind of rough looking, but it gives me a good idea on what it's going to look like. It has the fireplace, the TV, and a cabinet for my equipment. The next step is to get a basic layout of the space with all the equipment in place. Then illustrate the wires that's going to be needed. Start with the power. If you're not comfortable doing this work, I recommend having this done by an electrician. Here, I wanted the outlets to fall in the cabinet. So two existing outlets have to be tapped into to supply power to the two outlets in the cabinet. The outlet all the way to the right had the top part of that outlet controlled by the switch. So that worked out perfect for my setup. That meant I was able to control my new lights in the shelves with the switch on the wall. The bottom part of that same outlet also gave power to the outlet in the cabinet and up high to the router that was not controlled by the switch. Make sure you run the outlet behind the TV and my speaker did not require power so I didn't need to run power to it. Yours might need to. Now lay out the plug-in wires. I put two surge protectors in the cabinet that everything will get plugged into. Lay out the HDMI wires. I have a HDMI switch in the cabinet that all other equipment will connect to. But displays on the TV will be controlled by a remote control for that HDMI switch. I suggest having a hole behind the TV so you can run a cable in the wall down to the cabinet. You can install a dedicated box for the HDMI cable, but technology is forever changing. 
So I would rather have a hole where I can just feed new wire down to the cabinet. Here's the ethernet cable layout. Two will be in the wall. One going to the box for the router to connect to and the other behind the TV. You can have the ethernet and HDMI cable going out the same hole behind the TV. Just don't make a hole. Use a desk hole cover to make it look nice. The coax cable. Mines happen to connect to the wall all the way to the left. Now here are miscellaneous cables. The Wii phone jack. Here's a perfect example of why the hole is a better option. The Wii sensor is a hard wire that plugs into the Wii. I hook the sensor to the bottom of the TV, then run the wire down the hole to the Wii. Now years later, no more Wii. Here the speaker wires ran in the wall. Once you have a good idea of the wires you're going to need, make a checklist. Include how many of each wire you're going to need with an estimated length of each wire you're going to need. Accumulate all those wires. Now this next step is a pro tip for you. It's kind of weird, but I'm a visual person. You don't need to do this, but I measured everything out with masking tape to give me an idea of what the design is going to look like. If something doesn't look right, it's easier to change it now rather than build it than seeing that it doesn't look right. That costs more time and money. This process made me change the design. I had to move a wall more to the right, thicken up the wall and some of my shelves. Now imagine if I would have built that and then seeing it didn't look right. Once everything looked decent, the next step was to get an electrician to run the wire and install the new outlets. The masking tape on the wall also helps with laying out the outlets in the cabinet. Here we close up the walls where the outlets had to be added and got the framing done. Try to get in touch with a good carpenter to do this part for you. When your framing is exposed like this, this is when you want to run your wires for the lights, routers, speakers, etc. I set my speaker in place to check the fit. Here's the drywall installed. Here's another pro tip for you. When you're designing stuff like this, make sure you include access panels. Technology is always changing and you need to have access to wires, ways to change them. The bottom of my equipment cabinet has removable panels. The same with the panel under the fireplace. Make your lights accessible too. If the lights goes bad, you should be able to replace it. Here's another angle. You can see the access panels a little bit better. Here's another pro tip. You should consider a quick connect feature built in. You see the side of the equipment cabinet? I have an orange box there. That's an extra HDMI box. If I need to connect something to watch on the TV really quick, I can just plug the HDMI cable in that box, then plug the power to the outlet that's right next to it as well. Now I got the doors installed and the shelves. I wanted the lights facing up because I didn't want to be sitting watching TV with the lights shining on my face. That's also something to consider in your build. The shelves slide in and out. That gives me access to the lights for replacement. There are two screws at the bottom of each shelf to hold it in place. Here's the finished product. Another very important thing to mention. This is an electric LED fireplace wall mount fireplace. It is not meant to be installed in a wall like you see it here. When you're shopping for one, pay attention to this feature. A wall insert fireplace blows heat out the front. A wall mount fireplace blows the heat out the sides. Each uses a lot of electricity and some require its own circuit breaker. I didn't want to run a new breaker and wire to the panel. So what I did, and if you're comfortable on doing this, was that I opened up the fireplace and disconnected the blower and the heating element. Only the LED lights work on it. If you press the button on a remote to turn on the heat, nothing will happen. If you want an in-wall fireplace and you're not comfortable doing this, get that kind. 
don't get a wall mount. You don't want someone turning on the heat on a wall mount electric fireplace that is in the wall. You can burn your house down. All I wanted was to look. So that's why I disconnected the heat element and the blower. It worked out great. Here's another shot with the lights on and nothing on the shelves. Here's what the inside of the cabinet looks like. I made a pullout shelf for the printer. Here's another shot of the finished product. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. If this video helped you in any way, subscribe and hit that like button. Until next time, peace.